trees. Keely Hartwood didn't think her life could be any more depressing than it already was, but the sight of the green forest before her made her feel gray inside. She could already feel the tingling of her allergic reaction. Wood of any kind made her feel sick, but living trees were the worst. She stepped forward, slipping a little, and a ghastly smell greeted her. She looked down. She'd stepped inside a circle of rotten and decaying mushrooms. Gross! Thunder boomed in the dark clouds that hung from the overcast sky, promising more rain, more bad news for her white sketchers. Lately, all her news had been bad. The black mud on the wide, winding, tree-lined path sucked at the shoes, staining them as she struggled to keep up with Ms. Talbot's fast pace. The woman was her mother's attorney, and Keeley hated her almost as much she al as she already hated Colorado. Behind her, the taxi that had dropped them off spun its wheels on loose gravel, then skidded onto the paved road and sped away. Keeley didn't look back in case her longing to return to California showed on her face. She'd sworn to herself that she wouldn't cry, but the tears pushed at her throat trying to rise. Maybe it was the trees. There were too many trees and her tingling was turning into full-blown jitters. Episode 2 the Tree Shepherd's Daughter. Hello, and welcome to the second episode of Gas Mask Reader. This time around, instead of talking about a zombie horror novel like I did in the first episode, I'm talking about a young adult fantasy novel whose protagonist is a teenage girl. Or as you can probably tell by looking at me, I am not a teenage girl. I'm a 40-something man. Anyway, this book is called The Tree Shepherd's Daughter by Jillian Summers. The only thing I know about her is that she's a pseudonym for two other authors known as Berta Plattis, whose name I'm sure I mispronounced, and Michelle Roper, whose name I'm pretty sure I didn't. Anyway, the, the teenage girl who stars in this novel's name is Keely. She, her mother has recently died at the beginning of this book, and she's been sent to live with her father, who has been estranged from her. She is basically whiny, self-centered, and is continually making snide remarks in her head about pretty much everyone around her throughout the entire first half of the book. This basically leads to her being an extremely unlikable character. But, you know, I'm willing to forgive that a little bit because, you know, her mother just died, so you can cut her some slack, and being the kind of novel it is, you can be sure that she's going to learn her lessons, and eventually will come to realize that her father really loves her and all that stuff, and, you know, because that's the way these kinds of books work. The other problem I have with the character is that she was kind of dumb. I mean, as you can tell, since this is a fantasy novel, it's no real spoiler to say that magic exists and there are fairies and elves and the main character is naturally going to be revealed to secretly have magic powers. And despite the fact that, you know, by the halfway mark in the book, it should be blisteringly, blindingly obvious to anybody but a total moron that magic is real and elves and whatnot are real and Takes, but it takes her forever to admit it, largely because her mother seems to have somehow brainwashed her into thinking that magic isn't real because she wanted her to have a normal childhood or something. And to be honest, I didn't really like the sound of the mother at all. But the daughter seemed to love her, so I'm sure she had her good points. And let's see, besides that... Yeah, there was also some mention that the character was going to be the chosen one, you know, which is fairly common in these kinds of books, too. It doesn't actually come up in this one, but there are two sequels, so I'm sure she'll turn out to be some kind of chosen one in the next book, or the one after that at the latest. And I might actually read them, because I kind of enjoyed it. 
the general plot, you know, as I mentioned, it's a girl named Keely whose mother has recently died. You know, the mother was a fairly well-to-do lawyer in California. And she, so the girl, when she is sent to live with her father, who is a Renaissance fair wood carver living in Colorado. Naturally, the girl isn't happy because she's used to getting massages whenever she feels upset and hanging out with her friends and spending hundreds of dollars at the mall whenever she feels like it. And of course, she misses her mom. But yeah, she's really not happy about living in a Renaissance fair with a bunch of freaks and weirdos who like to play a dress up and pretend they're living in the Middle Ages. But, you know, like I said, weird things start happening because this is a fantasy novel. You know, there's strange events going on. There seems to be a little monster with a red hat. You know, if you're at all know anything about fantasy and fairy lore, it's obviously a red cap. It's running around causing trouble. And soon the girl gets caught up in the trouble and discovers she has magical powers and that she is, in fact, part elf. Minor spoiler, I guess, there, but you'll figure it out long before she does, because, like I said, she's kind of on the stupid side. And, you know, that's pretty much just the plot. And, yeah, sure, there's elves and whatnot. One of them's a really cute guy who she naturally falls in love with, and one of them is a, another girl who is naturally her big rival. There's also a goth girl who she befriends, and and a dwarf who is an, apparently an actual dwarf who's kind of nice. And there's a hawk that she makes friends with. And all kinds of stuff that you'd expect from these kinds of books. Now, despite not being the target audience for the book, and despite the fact that I really didn't like the main character at all for about half of the book, I actually did enjoy reading it. It's a fun novel. I think, you know, Teenage girls who like fantasy would probably love it. Even adults like me would at least like it. So mind you, I, you know, it's flawed, it's a bit on the predictable side in the plot, but to be honest, when you've read as many books as I have, most books are at least a little bit predictable on the plot side. But I still liked it, and I will probably eventually get the other books in the series and read them. So I would recommend buying it. If you want to buy it, there will be a link to the on for Amazon down in the description down below, and I will have up another video in the next few days. This one will probably be another horror novel, as I am just about finished reading Psycho Sanitarium by Chet Williamson, which is a really good book that I will definitely be recommending in the video. So stay tuned and tell your friends and subscribe. And <laughs>